I'm like, is it recording? Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome back to The Cult of Vintage. Um, today, we're going to go shopping. We're going to go shopping at a local place in Seals Grove, Pennsylvania. It is the Brick Firehouse Marketplace. Again, it's in downtown Seals Grove. Check them out. I really enjoy it. Um, if you're following me on Instagram at The Cult of Vintage, you will maybe recognize this place. I actually, this is where I got the chenille uh, bedspreads from. So hopefully today, one, they'll let me film. I mean, I kind of did it before without really asking. I'll ask today. Um, but yeah, let's get in here and see if we can't find some good stuff. Here's hoping. All right, so here is your exterior. Looks promising though, doesn't it? Let's head inside, shall we? All right, guys, so first up, look at this. Not one, but two spikes. One. I really like this one. So we're gonna pick those up. Not only that, but... Look at that. She's lovely, all of that green luster. Look at that gold detailing. She is unmarked. Let me see these up here. Or she was, and she was felted over. But she doesn't have any chips. She doesn't have any cracks, so... Uh, 15... Uh, I think we'll still get her. I think we will. Alright, so we're in the side here. We're gonna, we got those little treasures already. Let's check out over here. Hopefully that bulb doesn't. Mm. Not really feeling. I'm gonna set this down here. It's a little new. She's cute. Mm. Honey, I teared it. Yes, she did, honey. Do we have any recipes? No. Well, let's see over here. All right, you guys. All right, you guys. So I'm down here in the little cake toppers, and look what I found. A little bag of Halloweens. We got, what, two cats? No, three cats, a witch and a pumpkin, so we'll grab those. And like, here's some other things. Hey. <laughs> Say hi. These are mostly like weddings, graduation. We found the gold with the, the Halloween there. But you, know, you guys know I like to make a wreath or an assemblage. <clears throat> and finding Halloween is not the easiest. So we'll get these guys. We're going to add those in. Okay, so I am finding a couple of things. However, it's just not price where I want it to be. Like here you have the Fenton Amber uh, Rose Compote. Um, it does still, 
have most of its sticker intact. It's just the $8. It's not where I need it to be to get it. an amber. It's amber. Here you have some opalescent. It's reminiscent. It's a nappy. Reminiscent of Fostoria. However, the Fostoria, you would see the opalescent would run all the way into the base. I mean, it's pretty at the top, but mm, just not where we want it to be. Here we have a little chalkware Scotty. I don't know how much. I mean, he's got a little boo-boo, but... Uh, eight dollars. I'm not feeling it. Not feeling it for eight. Some clear glass. Now I've seen this before. It's a little ashtray, a little patchwork ceramic ashtray. You know, your cigarette would go in there and the smoke comes out of his nose. It is a Japan piece, but again, $8. It's just not really where I would ideally like it to be. If I were collecting, I would definitely recommend getting it for $8 because I think that's a very fair collector price. You know, down there you've got some flash glass. Now, pardon me, this is stained glass. Is it? Yeah, see right here, you can see the stain has come away. If you didn't know, the truest form of flashed glass is actually they would take a clear piece of glass, dip it into, or pardon me, layer over a molten layer of colored glass and they would bond. And that's actually true flash glass. <clears throat> what a lot of us now call flash glass is actually just stained. And the reason they don't use stain is because when we say stained glass, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? Church windows, right? Or lead glass, or pardon me, lead paned glass. Um, but stained glass is this. However, it is accepted to now call stained glass flash glass. But flash glass is actually a two-part process. It's two layers of glass. In Japan. A little silver cross Fenton back there. Pretty, but not, mm, not very exciting. <laughs> cute. Don't know. Could be putting back a Ming Dynasty antique. Who knows? <laughs> okay, so I don't know where to begin. You guys, we've found the mother load of Fenton custard glass. Um, I guess we'll just... You know, and here's the important thing of always having this with you. You have your little rocking horse here. Look at this beautiful hand-painted bell. This one, this Burmese. Look at this, you guys. Oh, that one's gorgeous. Of course, we do have the fairy lamp. Not only do we have that one, but you guys, look, we've got the lily pad. Now at 45, I'm not getting those, but gorgeous. Um, over here, we have the miniature hobnail uranium praying. Kids are down here. So much. Oh, look at this little bud vase back here, the hand painted. Yeah, that's what you're There's a lot going on. So I'm gonna have to take my time here. We're gonna check things out a little bit more. 
see what we don't pull out of here. Oh, and I saw this too. It's I think it's a bitters. The eagle foot. Yeah, this is bitters. Ball and claw bitters world's remedy, but it's an eagle or vulture foot. Not great. Okay, so here is where we're at. We're going to go with the Burmese Bell. We're going to go with the Mini Fenton. Now there is a candle in it, but you know. And we're going to go with the larger. Ooh. Now this was actually um, a QVC exclusive. So it is a new word. It's from 1999. Well, let's see if we can. However. from 1999 it was a qvc exclusive if you believe it or not but it is uranium it is a burmese it is hand painted it does have sugaring on it and there is some strong collector value to that one about anywhere from 80 to 120 so we're going to pick that up for sure okay guys so i wanted to show you this this is a little out of our price range um, but look at this beautiful Beautiful hand painted in the pond chocolate pot. It is in gorgeous condition. There's no chips or cracks to it. I just had to show you this. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's beautiful. And not only that, but look. Uh, isn't that stunning? My word. Like I said, that's a little out of our price point, but it is well worth the showcase. Amazing. What else do we got? Oh, here's a little vase. That's a cutie. This looks like a... Uh, no, it could be Czechoslovakian. It's reading more. Okay, so this one's reading. And now I say this one's reading CDI. It's um, this is to me is like a Japan knockoff of the Royal Beirut. Over here, we have another example. Now this one's a little bit crisper. This one's reading Czechoslovakian. Let's go around and see if we're right. Okay, so here we. Okay, so here we have this one. Ew. No, that one is. Now that one's Austria. Well, look at me being wrong. Watch, this one's gonna be Japan. <laughs> oh, no, that one's Austria also. Hmm. Just, do you see the subtleness of the glaze? With the airbrushing, it's a little bit more refined, this is what, really. Some pretty flow blue. Twelve dollars. It's not bad. That's not bad at all. Cute little sat. Is this Japanese? Noretake. That's cute. We're missing a lid back here, but <sighs> little gobel. I have a 1978. Mine's a check. And I saw down here. I thought this color was beautiful. Look at that color. Ugh. It's like a hobbyist piece. It's a beautiful color, though, isn't it? A little Art Deco y. Hand painted piece. Anything else? Hello. Oh, here we have some Bristol. Little clam broth. The reason they call it Bristol glass is there was a, what it was, a uh, Bristol, England, I believe, 
which is where those originally started. And there is a particular color of blue that they call Bristol blue, which is what they were most well known for. Uh, but blue, green, and I believe the yellow. Now I could be wrong about the yellow, you guys. A lot of flow blue in here. See, this looks more like um, what a European collector would go for because the flow, there's a little bit, but it's not as drastic as what American collectors typically go for. Where, here we go. There you go. I'd say that's a happy medium between a, uh, like a European and an American collector. You obviously see a lot more of the muddling of the color, but it's still not super super flowy Tupperware <laughs> all right guys what do you think I just found this beautiful rosette the colors are interesting but it's really giving you that mid-century vibe to it seems to be in really good condition this is what I don't like buying blankets and afghans for because it takes so much time to make sure that you're getting something that's in good condition. And it's so easy with like open weaves to miss holes. So I'm going to check this out a little bit more. This is a really strong possibility provided there's no major damage to it. Let's hope, shall we? Okay, so quick update. We're going to get it. There doesn't seem to be any major flaws, condition issues to it, so yay, it's ours. Holy moly. I, I'm, I'm very happy. Very happy. That was, that was, that was, oof, that was one of those trips that you just hope and pray happens. It happened today and we got it on camera. Oh my God. First shop along video with me and wow um talk about having a high bar <laughs> but seriously my i spent 115 dollars and one cent in there um that's scary i've i've never spent have i no i don't think i've ever spent that much at one location um i feel good about that amount for what i got I just, it's still weird. You know what I'm saying? For me to spend $115, I know for a lot of people, look, I roll with some, some ballers. I do. I know that I do. We're going crazy. I know that I roll with some ballers, but Michael ain't a baller. We ain't there yet. So $115 is like, uh, um, but again, I feel good about what we got. So it's not, it's not a question of, Ooh, did I do the right thing? I definitely got some great stuff. And I really have been trying to, I wouldn't say branch out, but I have begun to become more willing to quote unquote pay up for things just so that I can bring you guys some nicer stuff. Um, I really, I don't know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with finding, look, would I have been happy to have found that Fenton lace, um, custard uranium glass fairy lamp for a dollar well of course i would have um i did not find it for a dollar but again it's just one of those items where i know that they're in demand of course it's a fairy lamp it's uranium it's fenton it's custard glass so it just checks off so many boxes so anyhow <laughs> well i hope you guys enjoyed today's experience i know i got a little rattled there when i found all of that your that fenton custard I was like, oh, <laughs> the vintage, the, 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 the vintage endorphins were kicking in. So anyhow, all right, you guys, well, thanks for tagging along. Um, hopefully you saw, you saw some cool stuff and of course, all of it's going to be available in, um, some live sales coming up. If not, I'm filming on a Monday. It, it might pop up tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know. I know that's a naughty people don't like that I don't like it either but I'm just I'm trying to get the videos out trying to get the videos out and I'm already I've already got videos lined up for this week so ugh. anyhow thanks guys um, I appreciate it and remember until next time keep it rusty crusty and dusty bye guys <laughs>